Sure. I'm Nancy Kawaja from the Auto Catholic School Board, an Ottawa Civ Tech resource teacher here. And uh, we were really, really excited when we stumbled upon GMAP recently. We found one of the biggest areas where we required support for our students, particularly those was in the area of math. And um, that connected us to John McGowan, now with uh, Text Help. And uh, GMAP kind of grew and became what we now uh, use daily. I'll get over to the incredible John McGowan <laughs> to share uh, a bit about himself, and then we'll dive in and, and uh, get into Equatio. Sure, thanks. I really appreciate you uh, inviting me on to here. And it's uh, to A, make math digital, and it's really an accessibility problem. So to really make it accessible to all. So I'm super excited about that. And uh, I was just a high school math teacher for the past 15 years, one-to-one -one environment, and my were really struggling to create their math digitally. So uh, I learned how to code and made GMAT for my students, and then I ended up sharing it with another classroom, and then another, and another, and it just somewhat virally, and uh, it was really amazing for me to know that it was impacting so many students around the world. It just helped me to um, really dive into it even deeper and really enable students to be able to communicate their thought process whether it's in math or not it's really just enabling them to find their voice and really sharing what they what they know and that's really what every kid wants to do is like like tell you what they've learned math we do a really great job of making that hard to do and so that was my goal is to make it easier to do that and enable them to communicate in other ways and that's why i love udl the more i learned about it i was like yeah yes udl is generous and so i want to make it easy to do that with math um, so let me just, uh, before I, I'd just like to jump into a demo, otherwise I keep talking and talking, and so it's helpful if I talk while I give a demo out. So I'm going to share my screen to this correctly. I've tested a few times, and it was good, so um, let's see. Now my screen wants to disappear. Uh, here we go. Perfect. Can you guys? Awesome. So um, the big thing about the, the, the that I love about it is it brings these uh, UDL focus into math. And so the biggest thing about UDL is it just it is whoever a student wants to create or consume math, I want to let them do that. So we have uh, some, some prediction of uh, speech input, and we also let them use uh, handwriting recognition. So basically what it is, it's a Chrome extension. So there's a little button up in the Chrome bar. They can be in Google Docs and Google Forms, but next, a week from Tuesday, so May 30th, we'll launch it in Google Slides, Google Sheets, and Google Drawings. So I'm really excited that pretty much in the whole G Suite of math. Um, so I'll just start off with uh, one of the big things that I think about is the equation editor. So the, the, another difficult thing about math, besides the fact that it's hard to make it digital vocabulary all the time and that vocabulary also has new notation so there's like two new things that students have to learn in addition to understanding what the underlying concept is so to make the math digital usually they had to know what it looks like first and that's hard to do when you're learning so we put in some math prediction so if a student wants to make the square roots uh, symbol normally they need to know what that looks like to click the button but here we can let them just start typing square root and they can hit the enter key and they say oh that's the square root sign so to make square root of four you don't really need to know what it is you can literally have your teacher have written on the board and you can type the real word and then it'll make the math component on there and then we can insert that and put it into a google doc so the other great part that so i joined text help because uh the more and more i was working with gmath i found it was an accessibility problem and i loved read and write and text help does a great job of making things accessible for kids so we tie in directly to read and write when if everything you insert can automatically be read back aloud to you in how a math teacher would want you to he read it out. So square root of four. So everything we make is automatically accessible and read out as your math teacher would read it to you. So I'm really excited about that component. So there it, it lowers that barrier for students to learn. Uh, they don't need to know what the symbol looks like. They can just start typing the word in there. Even if it was like a bigger thing like the quadratic formula, they can just type QU and it'll come in and put the quadratic formula in there. So again, it's like changing the reference things for math. But I still didn't want to stop there because I feel like um, like 10 
years ago, I used to tell my students how important math is. And they'd say, I have a calculator. And I say, well, you're not going to be able to talk to your calculator. You need to tell it how to do the math. But now with speech input, it's so amazing. Like the technology has improved so much that it's superfluous it's everywhere uh, and so when I, I can do speech input I can literally talk to it and say square root of four and it'll filter out and put all my any non on math terms it filters out and just makes it. so now a student can literally just speak to it and then they can hear it read back to them so it eliminates that ability square root of four. it eliminates that need for them to understand what it is they can literally make it digital without understanding that's gonna help from a pedagogical standpoint to improve their learning um, and so one of the things I'm really excited about is we're constantly updating this and we can now do speech with uh, multiple lines. So I can even say five plus four equals new line nine, but I could, it automatically would do that new line and I can do that from an algebraic standpoint. I can do next step so we can continue to make uh, multiple lines work with uh, speech input. Another thing that we have is the handwriting component, which, so if I wanted to make two thirds, my handwriting is really terrible. Uh, I can write that, that down and then insert it into my document. And then now it's actually going to be accessible. So I can literally go from something that's handwritten to something that is accessible. And so once that gets inserted in there, it'll be read just as I would like to have it be read for, as a teacher. So I think that's another component that I'm really excited by is I can go from speech and it gets inserted and be read back or I can handwrite. And be read back or I can use that predictive part. I can also use multiple modes. I can start with one. Like when I do an email, I talk to my phone and it uh, usually does a pretty good job, but then I have to tweak it and I tweak it and it'll predict what I should use. So I can do all of those. So I could start recording and say 13x minus 4 equals 10. And then I can say, well, maybe I didn't want, maybe I wanted an x squared in there. So I can just click on the x where the x is and I can just start typing squared and it'll put it in there. And so I can correct in that method. Or maybe I even wanted 13x squared minus 4x. I can just do some handwriting and put an x in there. Or I can, um, it'll automatically put in, sorry. I can put that x in there and it'll recognize on the fly what I want to do and then I can insert that. So literally just the way that I interact with my emails, I can do that with math and make whatever, for, I'm really excited for students, whichever way they prefer to create or consume math, they can do that. And then it becomes digital and the teacher can then accept it. So I think that's the big thing is math, math teachers restrict students to say, no, you must do it in this manner and turn it in like this. Um, but really, we just want them to communicate their thoughts. So if they can use their preferred method and then bring, make it digital and bring it back, that's the ideal component. And then the last thing I want to show is that we can do that with a Google form as well. So we can actually use uh, Equatio to into the question. So I can just say solve for x, and I click the blue button, and I can just insert my map the same way I normally would. X squared plus four x and so I can, any of those methods, I click insert, and then it puts it directly into my Google form. And I can put those in various options as well if I want. But the best part is, for me, every time I demo it, I get so excited. This is just a normal Google form that if I send out to a student, if they have Equatio installed, it gives them an option to create math in there. So now they can speak to it or they could uh, use handwriting, or they can use prediction, however they want, all of those steps. So I can say, um, like normally I would put like x plus two, and then I might put that squared equals zero, and I can even go over if I want and do the next one and say new line, x plus two equals zero, next step, x equals negative two. And so that one, it missed my new line. So I, I can actually tell it over here. Like I can say, no, I want a new line. And it can correct on that part. So I can even just type it. I even had some students like to type in their uh, word problems and it'll pull out what the word component is. So that's a good way for using it for students with, uh, to help them with that comprehension. So if I do that, just uh, from in a form response. That's a really great way that I'm excited to use Google Forms and that component to get formative assessment, but also to allow students just to communicate however they want to for that thought process. So, um, so I talk really fast when I get excited, so please, you guys can stop me, but really I wanted to show that's what we have in stock right now. In a week and a half, all of 
that the same format, um, that equatio that pops up on the bottom to allow the responses, it'll be available in slides, which for me is really great. I use slides all the time. I have students create their responses in a slide and then also in sheets as well. So we're really excited how that works together. And we're constantly updating. We, have, uh, we also do other prediction items. So it's a STEM component. Um, by default, when we ship it out, it's only uh, with math prediction, but you can come here and toggle on and off chemistry and formulas. And we're adding constantly different formulas in there. So for instance, if I wanted to do, if I, I have so, sodium aluminate, which is a really difficult one uh, that I see with lots of subscripts and superscripts, I have all of those. So pretty much any uh, chemical compound we have in here uh, that you can think. So we're also adding more and more in our next shipment. We should have a bunch of uh, chemistry laws, thanks to one of my friends, Efren Rodriguez in Texas. So any teachers, if it's not in there, please let me know and we can add them more, the formulas in there. Like difficult ones, like a correlational coefficient. That's a difficult one to type, but my students will use that as the first step and then they can put in what their X bar and Y bar are, and S of X. All of those things are helpful for um, students to be able to put, even like vertex form of an equation, lots of reference things. So um, yeah, I want to give, time to have questions so questions that we might have wow that that is quite a tool john that you've created and uh, as i said i think the best response we've gotten here on the chat area is all all my apple pie <laughs> that's all i can say uh, this is a really a game changer because um as i'm going to share in my presentation kids with disabilities are really on the represented in stem fields it all starts early on in school, right? Because with a lot of these STEM careers, you, they kind of build up. You have to start early, and then it's all kind of cumulative. So if you fall behind early on, it's kind of hard to catch up. You know, guilty as charged, I fell behind in math because of learning another language, and then it was hard to catch up. Right. So um, what's your favorite? I'm going to put you on the spot. What's your favorite tool in, in Equatio? Like, I know you showed us quite a few. You have um, so many different ways that you can input and output math. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite tool that you're the most excited about? <laughs> I'm going to cheat and tell you more than one. So I think the coolest one for me is the handwriting recognition because I think it's just magic. Um, but I find that I use the prediction the most and it becomes like a time saver for me. So if I had to pick one, I would pick the prediction of the speech input and uh, but i think the handwriting is just magic every time i see absolutely that, so. i would agree with that um uh, mia agrees as well she says the handwriting is awesome let's see what other questions i know there were a couple of questions regarding the accessibility for students who are blind sure so can you speak to that a little bit yeah so i think the biggest part that we struggled with is my I truly want math to be accessible for all and we take the accessibility part we take a library that is created for people who are visually impaired. And a lot of that is pretty verbose because if you are blind, you need that extra help of like the structure. So for, for instance, if I had like the fraction two thirds, um, most of the spoken for a vision impaired would say start fraction, numerator two, denominator three, end fraction. And so that's kind of verbose. And even when we talk in math, we would say like two thirds or um, two over three or two out of three. So we just Decided to stick with just that in terms of we feel like if you are uh, blind or visually impaired, you might have another screen reader as well. And so we also put our spoken math in the alt text of, of an image. So if you use another screenwriter, it can come through and read it, um, like if you're using JAWS or something like that. And we're working on improving some of the accessibility of the toolbar itself. Um, for, for, um, for blind people. I really feel like we're using common math language, even though it's not geared specifically towards those who are blind or visually impaired. It will be somewhat of um, what they will hear naturally in the classroom. Um, so that was kind of the compromise we to read aloud to all people. Yeah, and, so as, you, and as you said, uh, if you're using this on a Mac, you'll have voiceover already included, and you'll probably have that turned on. on or. On a Chromebook, you turn on, um, I don't know if all of you know, but Chromevox is built into Chromebooks. It's a, a screen reader you can use on those devices. So most likely you're using one of the built-in screen readers, or if you're on Windows, you're probably using a commercial screen reader like JAWS or the open source uh, NVDA. So, um, you know, that probably, as you said, will be able to 
access some of that content to those screen readers. Uh, let's see, somebody asked about this Calculia and using this uh, system or this uh, tool with them. Nancy, you, do you want to comment on that? Let's see, I don't hear you. I think your mic is still muted. Sorry, did you just ask me that? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> uh, I wanted you to, somebody ask about this Calculia if, if you Yeah, used. we we actually did because um, uh, my colleague had has a daughter with um, this Calculia and, and uh, so we're wondering um, if students, Nancy said that students had used it and so I was just wondering the feedback regarding what parts of Equatio were most helpful to those students with this calculator, um, but she said that they're only a month or so into it. So I guess the combination of that and explain everything, which is interesting to me too. How do you guys use, um, like how do you app smash that to help you? I'm, I'm just so, you know, it's, it's just such, it's so exciting. It is exciting. Yeah. I do have a, I have a couple things I want to say about that as too. So one of the handwriting things, like you know, this only recognizes as a three, um, but some of the things, like if I wanted to do, like sometimes that might be a one, but it thinks it's a calculus thing. Working on restricting that, so like even if they do this, is it? It'll say epsilon, but if students reverse their numbers, they really might mean a three there. Um, so one of the things we're working on is make, making the handwriting to be more. Uh, you can click like I'm an elementary student and we'll only recognize numbers or we'll make it easier to do like columnar addition and things like that and work with those switched um, flip numbers. So that's one of the things that's in our uh, goals to have in the, the next six to nine months is something along those lines. Um, and as we are accessibility, we like to bring those, those other structures in. So we have some longer range goal back to school this August to help with some other structures for struggling students. Like even myself, I remember when I was learning how to add, I had to turn my paper sideways to align my, my columns. So some of those types of math structures for support we'll have in our, our Sweet, our and if we know anything about text help is that they're always improving their tools, they're always updating them. Um, just over the last few years with the main read and write tool, you've probably noticed some new things. Uh, you know, they keep getting added to the toolbar. So I know that they're always working on making their product uh, better. And as you said, you have some plans for back tools. So that's something that we'll be uh, able to look forward to. Now, you uh, can you tell us a little bit about getting uh, Equatio? I know um, there's a trial, right? Sure, yeah. So you can just go to the Google Chrome store and uh, I can send a link in the chat as well. But literally, you can just go to the Google Chrome store and search Equatio. The word, it's equation with no N. So once you search for it, you can install it. The initial trial, like you get all the premium features for 30 days. And then after that, it reverts to just the free features. And so the difference in the premium and the free is in the pre premium, you get the prediction. SQ, I get the squared thing. In the free version, that doesn't exist, um, but it does still have all of the nice, if I hit a shift, it does that. So that, like the free version essentially is GMAT. So we took GMAT and built it in. Um, and so the prediction part is premium and the uh, unlimited handwriting is premium as well. So handwriting recognition, you get two inserts per day free and unlimited for premium. And Google Forms integration, the student response and the Google Forms integrations premium. But the other part is the freemium. So speech input on Docs and the LaTeX and all the other components uh, in Docs are free. So the thing that if you were using GMath, you should use Equatio because we're improving it. And everything that was in GMath is free in Equatio. Absolutely. So make sure you're using a tool that's uh, being actively developed so that you get uh, you know, new features and new improvements as they come out. So uh, we've put, uh, Rhiannon put in the uh, link to the Chrome oh, awesome. store. So, so um, go ahead and uh, those of you after this session, uh, visit that link and uh, make sure you get started checking out um, Equatio. And uh, Lindsay asks, is it part of the text help package or is this separate? I separate, separate, but if right? you have other, we do a discount if you have, um, if you have read and write. So it's okay. discounted if you're already a customer. Excellent. Thanks for answering that. Will you add similar features like in Photomath? I don't know if you're familiar with the Photomath. Yeah, so I love Photomath. I think one of the great things about Photomath is you take the picture, it shows the steps and calculates it. 
Um, there's some other amazing calculation tools like Desmos.com is a great calculator as well. And they just added some new geometry stuff. And um, Wolfram Alpha does some great calculations. So we're not getting into that yet. We want to make the input part really delightful and easy. And then we can branch out into some other representations. Um, so the good part that you do say, like if anything I make in here, my math, I can I can just, um, if I wanted to make something, I can do x squared plus 3x, or, and I can literally just copy and paste that into desmos.com, and I can graph that or calculate it. So we are making a nice to play with. We just aren't doing the, that component. Oh, and you, you have some fans in the chat area, so there's somebody <laughs> who wants your contact info, John. I'm sure they can find you through the text help, help uh, website. Yeah, do that as well. Um, I will show at the end. If you want like a quote or something, you can either hit me at my email, j.mcgowan at text help, or on Twitter, um, and we can definitely work with that. Or if you go in the Equatio app and then do the feedback, that's a Google form, and then every time that gets sent, it goes directly to me. So I respond as quick as I can. And with there, usually no longer than 24 hours. But send feedback goes directly. And as, as, well. as we mentioned in some of the, um, the the design thinking part, you know, this these tools are built as part of a community. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have suggestions for how to improve the tool or features that you would like to see, then you know you now have a face to go along with the name. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you send those uh, text helps away and they'll get to John and so we can continue to uh, make this tool even better. But uh, already they're doing an amazing job of just making sure that math, which has been a big challenge for our learners or our verse learners, now has uh, more accessibility. So. Uh, John, I want to thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, uh, all the way from Ireland, and uh, sharing Equasio and the wonderful work that you're doing at TechSelp to make math and uh, STEM more accessible.